So now we're ready to stitch block four. Here she is. Block four and block 13 are actually the same block. They go into this position right here. This is block four and this is block 13. This is actually my favorite block. I think four of these together would make a most stunning pillow. So let's get started stitching block four and block 13. Block four and 13, my favorite block in the quilt. Um, you'll need to make eight of these. And to do that, the supplies you'll need is your battleizer hooped up and ready to go. You'll need a background fabric B. You'll need two smaller fabric twos. You'll need a fabric three. You'll need a fabric six and a smaller size. And then the back of the block, if you're using our optional back, you'll need another fabric six. For threads, you'll need a needle and a bobbin thread of thread A, and a needle and a bobbin of thread B, a needle and a bobbin of thread C, and of course you'll need a bobbin of regular embroidery thread. So we're going to take this over to the machine and stitch the block. Working on block number four and 13, and step number one is the placement stitch for your fabric or your optional wool. Water soluble thread in the needle and regular bobbin thread in the bobbin. Step number two is to place your wool if you choose to use it or you can skip it and go right on to step three. Step number three is to place your background fabric B directly over your placement stitch or your wool, centering it, and continue with the water soluble thread and stitch it down. And step, step three will also have the placement stitch for all of your fabrics. Step number four is to place a small square of fabric two in this location here and this location over here. So we're going to center the fabric two right over this little area right here. Make sure your fabric two is right side up. We're continuing with the same thread and I can feel through the fabric where my stitching will be. So I'll go ahead and stitch that little section down. I'll stop it halfway through again so I could show where to place the second piece of fabric. Again, I'm gonna put it right side up. Batiks are so hard to tell. In this area right here, centering it, I can feel where the stitching is. 
and let that stitch. And next we have to trim so these are appliques so we have to trim um, and really really close right here because this is the outside of the applique and this area right here will be covered up with another piece of fabric. So we're going to leave a scant eighth of an inch right here. So it doesn't have to be real close. So we'll just trim it just about like that. And then this edge will go nice and close. And then this one, the same thing. This is where it will meet another fabric, so this area gets an eighth of an inch trim. Pardon my hand. And then this is your outside edge, which will get a satin stitch, so we want to trim that nice and close. So there we go. So now we'll put it back on the machine for the next step. We're at step five and that step is to take fabric three and place it over the whole block. It's going to put, it's going to put the fabric in this area, this area, and this area over here. So we'll just center fabric three continuing with the water soluble thread and we'll go ahead and stitch it down. So now we need to trim our fabric three. So I'm removing the hoop from the machine. And this area here is actually going to be covered by another piece of fabric. So here we're going to trim it a scant eighth of an inch. So I will do that first. So this will get another piece of fabric next. This area out here will get your satin stitch, so this needs to be trimmed very closely.
So there we go. So now I will put this back on the machine and we'll continue with the next step. I'm going to go ahead and trim these little corners off right here because I know I won't want them when I'm done. Another one right here, right there. So now we are at step six, and step six is to take your fabric six, and it's going to cover these two areas. So I'll just place my fabric six right side up, covering those two areas, and I'm continuing with the water-soluble thread and stitching the tack down. So now we're going to go and trim this one. And on this particular one, we're going to trim close all the way around it. So I will go ahead and do that because this whole thing is an applique. This is where I want to trim this little orange underneath, get that, get rid of that. But then we'll just trim close right here. So there we go, and I don't think I mentioned it, but when you do this step here, make sure you keep that fabric within your seam allowance so that you don't have a raw edge here on this side as well. So now we're going to put the hoop back on the machine and continue with the next step. Next step is step seven, and we will place our thread A in the needle only, and it will stitch the satin stitch in these yellow areas to cover the raw edge. Next step is step eight, and we're going to put our thread B in the needle only, and it's going to cover the satin stitch right here on my orange fabric. Step 9 is next, and I've got thread C in my needle, and it's going to go ahead and stitch the satin stitch around this aqua color.
step 10 we're going to put thread A in the needle only and it's going to stitch a flower right in the corner. Ready for step 11 and I've placed thread B in my needle only and it's going to stitch a decorative stitch right in this area here. where we place the back and the back is fabric six if you happen to be doing the optional back and we just need to put it right side up centering it over the stitching smooth it out if you'd like to use a little bit of spray adhesive that's okay I uh, hoop with the battleizer rough side facing down so it tends to grab it so we'll put it back on the machine and go ahead and stitch the back on Water soluble thread in the needle and we'll go ahead and let it stitch the back on. So step 13, I put my thread B in my needle and my bobbin, and I've got the back on now, so I do need to go on my machine and turn off my automatic thread cutter. There we go. And the other thing we need to do is bring my bobbin thread up to the top. So we'll hold the top thread, use the needle up down, and pull that bobbin thread up to the top. And then we'll go ahead and stitch step 14. Ready for step 14 and I put my thread A in my needle as well as my bobbin and because we're doing quilting I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top and then go ahead and finish the stitching. Last step for block 4 and 13 is step 15 and we're going to place our thread C in the needle and the bobbin and finish out the quilting. And just like all the other quilting steps, we're first going to pull our bobbin thread up to the top and hold on to it while it stitches and let it finish.
So it's time to trim up block 4 and block 13. So we'll use our trimmer by George and pull the front of the block back and shimmy that, shimmy that metal edge up to the basting line. And trimming off the battleizer and the backing. Almost done. So the battleizer and the backing is completely gone from the back and on the front we'll turn the trimmer over and put the basing line right on the quarter inch line and trim all of my excess seam allowance off. One more side. So there we have block four and block 13 all trimmed.